Boogeyman is back in a movie in 2018. It's the new Halloween movie. I saw the shit last night and now I finally get a chance to talk about it. I shouldn't even have to set the plate for you guys. You guys should already know what time it is. It's Michael Myers. It's Halloween. It's that time of year. It's the movie that you wanted to see. So what's been going on in the world of Halloween since the world's most dangerous and unrealistically quick power walker was strolling around killing people in 1978? Want to set the stage of the story? It's been 40 years since all of that happened. Lori Strode has, well, she's been through some things since then. She's essentially taken the last 40 years and tried to transform herself into Sarah Connor. She's all of a sudden really good with guns. She's good with combat. She's good with survival situations. She's preparing for the day that Michael Myers escapes from wherever the hell he's being held at so that she can finally track him down and kill him once and for all. What's Michael Myers been doing for 40 years? Well, he's, he's just been chilling. That's, that's what he does. He just chills and he stands in one spot. He doesn't say shit to anybody because Michael Myers doesn't need to say anything. If he were a modern day phrase in 2018, the dude would be Netflix and kill. If he goes over to a girl's house to watch some Netflix, he's not trying to talk. He's not trying to fuck. He'll just watch the movie silently with her and then he'll kill her afterwards. Apparently he took a vow of violence or something or, you know, it's kind of like a vow of silence except obviously there's a lot more murder and bloodshed in it. Michael Myers is getting transported and then he breaks out of the transport because, of course, because otherwise there wouldn't be a movie. And so Laurie Strode and Michael Myers are on a collision course of destiny and in the meantime, Michael Myers is going to walk around a neighborhood and pretty much slaughter everybody in his path. I've been looking forward to this movie for a very long time. It was one of my more anticipated films in the second half of the year. Luckily, this movie seems to skip over or ignore all of the events of the other movies. It pretty much is just a direct sequel to the original, so... You know, I feel like they, they did us a solid on that one. There is definitely a lot of things to like about this movie. There are some things that are wrong with it, because of course, but I'll save that for later on in the review. Let's talk about the shit that I did like. I mean, let's be honest, you're not tuning into this review because you want to hear, hey, how did Sally feel about the fact that this person last Friday did her nails wrong? Like, you don't give a fuck about any other person in this movie, except maybe Lori. All you care about is, was Michael Myers back and was he badass? And I gotta say that Michael Myers in this movie is back. He is officially a badass once again. They delivered on the thing that you wanted the movie to deliver on. I can at least tell you that. He's just as intimidating and menacing as he ever was. I love the way the mask looks on him. And I love the brutal kills that he dishes out in this movie. He kills a lot of people in this movie. And what I love about it is that it captures the atmosphere and the tension that you felt when you watched the first Halloween. The movie stylistically feels like it's paying homage to the original Halloween. In fact, there are some scenes that feel like they're ripped off completely from that movie. Something that sits in the back of your head the longer the movie goes on where you're like, okay, I've seen this before, I've seen this before, wow, that looks really familiar. But at the same time, when it works, it really does work. It's not about Michael Myers stabbing somebody or slamming somebody's face into a wall or something. It's about the sheer brutality. I mean, at one point in the movie, you're just sitting there like, damn, my, yo, he, he, yo, he was dead like 10 head smashes ago. What the fuck are you still doing? That's Michael Myers. He doesn't give a shit. He's just pure evil. That's the way he's supposed to be. Such a weird moment to space out on one of the more well-known actresses of the generation. I don't know why her name is not coming to me. I feel like it's one of those things where, oh, you're a dumbass. You should have remembered that, but ah, whatever. I'm just going to call her Lori for this review. The actress that all of you know who she is that I can't currently remember for some strange reason, she was really great in this movie. She really did a great job at portraying the kind of trauma that would befall a person after having somebody like Michael Myers walk into their lives. Yeah, she trained herself to be Sarah Connor, but she's also cost herself a lasting relationship with her daughter and her granddaughter. She's alienated her family. She's kind of alienated everybody. She's kind of a recluse. She's really awkward. She's really fucking paranoid. This movie does illustrate that a trauma like Michael Michael Myers would probably affect different people in different ways. She was badass, but she also was badass while being vulnerable. Doesn't feel like, oh, just unwavering fear in the face of instant death. Really dug the musical score, too. It was really great to see those old Halloween themes kick in when the action gets started. Speaking again to the atmospheric tension of the movie, I feel like it's important to point out that the camera work really played a big role in that. You see a lot of shots where there's a lot of long single shot takes and where there's not a lot of cuts and there's not a lot of movement, but you can definitely tell that there's things that are moving in the background and in the corners and in the shadows. In that sense, this movie plays with that idea of, holy shit, there's somebody behind me. Holy shit, there's somebody watching me. Holy shit, is somebody about to get me? That's what I felt when I watched the original Halloween, and that's what I felt when I was watching this movie. It all just builds to a really exciting finale. And the finale of this movie, no spoilers, but man... I had chills and I was on the edge of my seat for that shit. This movie definitely had its fair share of problems, I'm not gonna lie. For starters, I feel like every other character in this movie outside of Lori was pretty much useless. I don't mean useless in the sense of, oh, they didn't kick ass like her. I mean useless in terms of, 
I don't actually know what they added to the movie. I did like her daughter, I think played by Julie Greer, or I think that's her name. I can't remember if that's her actual name. She played Laurie Strode's daughter in the movie, and the relationship and the dynamic between them, the fact that they're two broken people trying to piece their lives back together after all of this paranoia and trauma, I actually really like that. But there are so many other characters in this movie that just feel completely disposable. They feel like cannon fodder, like they're only in there to do something stupid so that it propels the plot forward. Yeah, sure, you can say that's a nitpick because there's a lot of things that happen in horror movies nowadays where you could look at it and say okay that was stupid that was dumb why did that happen but when the movie spends so much time focusing on these other characters and then characters just consistently do dumb shit throughout the movie that only exists to propel the story forward i gotta call a spade a spade that's just kind of weak and lazy for me a couple of subplots in this movie that i'll be honest i don't know why they were there they didn't really add anything there's this one subplot where these people are trying to get inside the head of michael myers and trying to figure out what makes him tick and i'm just kind of like this feels like a time waster. This other subplot with this other doctor character, I'm not going to spoil who he is or whatever, but he's essentially like Loomis from the original Halloween. There's a twist involving his character, and I'll be honest, it really didn't pay off. Like, it was kind of interesting for a second, but then it just gets thrown away after like two minutes, and you're just like, oh, okay, we're not, we're not going to go anywhere with that. All right. The movie definitely has some annoying, irritating, completely replaceable characters that you don't give a shit about. And the problem with that is the movie spends more time focusing on them and their subplots than the actual meat of the story, which is Michael and Lori and her daughter. That's really the heart of the story. I feel like they should have focused way more on that and less on the boring subplots that didn't really add to anything. But guys, I really, really, really dug this movie. I think it's one of the best Halloween movies that we have seen in quite a while. Maybe the best one since the original. I feel like if you're a diehard Halloween fan and you love to see Michael Myers, brutally decapitate people for two hours, I feel like mostly you're going to be satisfied. And I mostly was satisfied. Not enough to say I love it, but still a good time. I'm going to put it in the Silver Age of Man of Steel. Tell me what your favorite Halloween movie is in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fat Show, and as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel, and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace!